Theoretically, there is a way to beat Terraria without a keyboard. Yes, it is possible to beat Terraria with only two buttons, the left click and the right click. First, two notes. We're assuming that we can't remap controls, and so if we could just use auto pause and control remapping, we could theoretically use just one button to do any action in the game, and that kinda ruins the whole spirit of this run. We'll be sticking with the default control map for this. Also, this isn't a challenge video, this is a theory video. As you'll soon see, this challenge takes a decent amount of time, and though theoretically possible, it is rather masochistic as a challenge. It'll take a bit for me to do this as an actual run, though let me know if you want me to. For now, this is simply a theory video with no true run behind it. Either way though, let's get started. You first start in a blank world. Now what? Our first goal should be to obtain some form of movement, and in this starting position you basically only have two options, either dig down or do nothing. In typical no movement runs where only WASD and space is banned, players often opt to dig down to acquire iron and a hook or gems to make a grappling hook, which forms the basis of their movement from then on. However, for us, even the grappling hook is useless as it requires the grappling hotkey E to fire. For those wondering, the ability to grapple from your inventory was removed in 1.3.1.1, so we don't have the option to do that either. So then, what can we do to move? Well, there are a few ways. The first way is using grenades. These things inflict a knockback, and as they self-damage the player, they can be used to move you like this. See that? That's movement. Unfortunately, this method is both A, cumbersome, and B, very, very slow. A faster method using the same strat is getting slimes to hit you back. Still, this takes a lot of health, and is excruciatingly slow. There are ways to move without taking damage, though. The easiest way that I can think of is using chairs. Yes, chairs. You can sit in chairs using right click, and you can relocate between chairs while on a chair, as long as the other chair is within two tiles of you. You can form a chain of chairs between you and the destination, and just like minecart boat elevators, this is a legitimate method of transport. Chairs only cost a small amount of wood to craft, and since we spawned in a forest biome, this should make transport a piece of cake. So, we chop down our trees, and... Well shit. We might have the materials for chairs, we just can't craft them, since opening our inventory to craft something requires us to press the inventory button. Well, this requires a bit of unorthodox thinking, and luck because there actually is a way for us to craft. That way is the chest. You don't need to open your inventory to craft if you can open a storage container instead, since the crafting menu is always available there. All we need to do is have a slime knock us to a naturally occurring chest by chance. How fun. Or so you thought. This stupid slime bouncing strat might seem like our only option, putting our hands in the stupid RG slime AI, but a little more thinking can net us a much better solution. This is the guide and he likes walking around. While he's mostly just a useless character sacrifice for the plotline, he does actually provide the catalyst for our run in this case. As per his name, the guide allows us to access a crafting guide via his menu, which tells you how to craft certain items. What's important for us is that when you open this menu, it also opens your inventory, and therefore also your crafting menu. Bingo. No slimes needed. So, use this guide crafting menu to grab a workbench, place it, use your wood to craft chairs, and begin the chair pile toward the nearest chest, since we still want a stationary way to open our inventory. Once we get to the chest, we can craft a workbench and grab the chest, then reload our game to finally save and restart back at our spawn. Back at spawn, we can place down our chest and workbench, then finally craft our chairs, creating our very first click-only transport system in Terraria. Congratulations! We now have both movement and crafting unlocked. With our most basic movement skills secured, we can now actually progress in Terraria. It is now highly advised to head down the caves to find iron and create minecart tracks, as minecart tracks can be hooked onto with right click, not E. This pseudo hook has slightly better range than chairs, which is useful, but it is hampered by the fact that you cannot right click directly from rail to rail, unlike with chairs. While this lack of direct jumping seems to render them useless, they are absolutely not so. By integrating rails and chairs, we can increase our movement speed and potential. Chairs are as effective as ever for left to right movement, but the minecart's hook is much better for vertical mobility than chairs can be. Chairs cannot be stacked vertically like this as the distance is too great, but track can do this just fine. Thus, this grid of tracks and chairs allows us full movement in all directions just by clicking. Excellent. As a bonus, you can also look into using this hoik technique with embedded minecart rails for extremely rapid one-click transport in a single direction. This is best used for something like quick routes between core locations, or quick escapes next to arenas. It is extremely cumbersome to build, but also very convenient. After obtaining minecart track and digging a trillion mine shafts, your goal in the underground will be to gear up for the first boss fight we'll be doing, Skeletron. 
Both a required boss and a massive opportunity, the defeat of Skeltron grants us access to the mechanic, and thus three very important things. Teleporters, wiring, and booster tracks. For now, booster tracks will be the most important for the next boss fight. You see, when we hook onto a booster track, our minecart gets accelerated like a normal minecart, allowing us to do normal minecart things. This is quite literally the only method of transport we have that doesn't rely on clicking. The importance of this becomes clear when looking at the wall of flesh fight, and most other boss fights really. Minecarts are already pretty beefy for boss fights in standard playthroughs, so having them be of use here is amazing. This is why we're checking off Skeltron as our first boss. So we can use our rail chair method to head all the way to the dungeon, then challenge Skeltron. At least on classic mode with enough gear, Skeltron should be pretty easy to take down even with the severe move of bottleneck. With Skeltron down, we can then move on to rescue the mechanic and obtain our sweet, sweet booster rails. With booster rails in hand, it is now our best bet to head down to hell. The wall flesh arena here should be in essence a minecart track, which should be more than adequate. The easiest way to kill the wall of flesh should be to use dynamite, as done by many speedrunners, and on classic mode, this is not that difficult. Just use one boost rail to get to 20 miles an hour, then throw dynamite with impunity. Should be dead rather quickly. With two bosses down and now in hard mode, the fights stay roughly the same. Our primary means of mobility in the coming boss fights will be the minecart rail, with looping rail built across the road likely being the best way to do it. By this point, the run actually becomes rather straightforward movement-wise. Rails are still rails, and even if we can't speed up and slow down on a whim, they do remain as powerful as they do on standard terraria. And of course, now that we've unlocked wiring as well, we get to use teleporters. Teleporters make every inch of the world accessible at a click, and also make for excellent boss cheese, basically erasing most of our worries about defeating bosses. Through all this theory crafting, the only missing keybinds that have actually been annoying are the movement key, grapple key, minecart key, and the movement keys. And we found ways around all of these using just left click. Just looking at the controls menu, there aren't actually really many other keybinds that are important enough to pose a risk to us at this point. Whether we use a looping rail or teleporter cheese to kill bosses, no other roadblocks present themselves in the way of our click-only run. All three mech bosses can be summoned naturally using altars or using their spawns, both of which don't require key presses. It's a simple left click on the summon or altar for those. Lantera is breaking a bulb, which is also left click. Golem, unlike the rest, is right click, but the same regardless. There's no issue with the temple key either, since post Monterra we can literally just rot in. And lastly, Moonlord is literally automatic after the cultists, so no issues here. Besides, there simply isn't a lot locked behind keybinds in Terraria, and there are plenty of movement techs, so this run is completely doable, as are other movement keyless runs already done by fellow Terrarians like Shaggy Mask and Crab Bar. All it takes is a bit of luck, and grit, and a whole lot of chairs. Hopefully you enjoyed this little video of mine, and thank you to both Adventure32 and This Is A Bad Name for helping me with creating this idea. I might do this challenge later as an actual run, so let me know in the comments below if you want that. If you're part of the three-fourths of my viewers who haven't yet subscribed, I ask you to do so as well. Either way though, thank you for watching, and good day and goodbye.